Oh, we'll do it. We'll go and we'll run in. Come here, little fella. I want to tell you a secret. I'm just like you. We're both down here in the dirt. Mine just happens to be imported. You are fighting in traffic, and I am fighting charges of trafficking. We're so similar. You're working a nine to five job, and I am having to look at that. We're both going through it. So don't hate me. I'm not the problem. It's the wine snobs. They're the ones that look down on you. The wine snobs are really, they're really down I don't on. blame them. Uh. No, no, he's learning. Listen, let me pull you up by your bootstrap. The best wine is rosé box wine. Basic clap, basic clap, basic clap. Perhaps. What if I made you my little... What's up? Uh, let me, uh, like, a minute. Thank you. Pygmalion. That's a <laughs> reference that you wouldn't get. You know what? Perhaps I shall make a series of videos that will give you some sort of clue about <laughs> fancy things. Yes, that's what I'll do. Something to give you just enough information to bluff your way through a fancy dinner. Did you know that Dan Vinci painted the Mona Lisa? Somebody had to hold open the gates for the barbarians. Why not me? So let's do it. Let's look at... Thank you. Wine. The Mountain Dew of upper society. With wine, there is only one rule. Kill or be killed. And if you want to survive the night, here are six things you should know about wine. To you muggles, the words on these bottles must seem like a mystery. Pie not no iron? But us landlords, <laughs> we, the pink Himalayan salt of the earth, we know what they mean. They are grape names. Look upon this grape vine. Like it real? makes grape berries. Now, there are many different species of grape berry. And whatever the berry species is will determine the type of wine. This is Chardonnay, so it will make Chardonnay. Merlot grapes, they make Merlot wine. Grape names are mostly French, gross. But for example, in English, <laughs> Pinot Noir means black pine, because it kind of looks like a black pine cone, if you squint. Here's some of the other names. You can pause it. I'm busy. Wine grapes are not like the kind you get at the supermarket. Those are table grapes. You can think of it kind of like the difference between cooking chocolate and regular chocolate. You can eat them, Ugh. but they're overly sugary and kind of full of seeds and just not as nice to snack on. So the grape type is the main word on the bottle, but sometimes there are other There's words a mix of, like, as read well. It. For example, this Borgogni. What the hell is a chablis? Oh, it's the region. It's all regions. Ah. Allow me to explain through the medium of song. There's Chianti and Pibonet, also there's Burgundy, don't forget Chablis Bordeaux. This one's from Italy, this one's from Italy, this one's from France, this one's from France, this one's from France, this one's from France. This, this, they're all from France, we're Italy. Look, the general rule is, if you see a term you don't understand, it's probably just the French or the Italians being all la-di-da about their particular region. All right, let's move on to price. Come on, I know a place. Ah, uh, we're here. I can tell by the name on the sign. Now, don't embarrass me, I didn't bring my ID. Fiddle TD, look at all these bottles. So many options. Ooh, a cheeky $200 bottle. And here, oh, a $20 bottle. Now, I bet this $200 bottle tastes way better, right? Oh, like it's gotta be 10 times better than this one. That's just basic math. Go on though, you choose one. Oh, no. Well, it was supposed to be a trick question, but uh, they both taste pretty similar, right? There's not some threshold that you get to where it gets more expensive, and then it tastes better, and then more expensive again, and it tastes even better, until it gets so expensive and so incredible that it's like nothing you've ever had before. Break through the conditioning. 
This is just old grape juice. Now, if you're a little bi-curious about a more expensive bottle, sure, why not? Gold letters grace the label, hand engraved by goldsmiths. Famed wine critic described the taste as mind-boggling. But realistically, after about $60, the flavor yeah, doesn't get much better. better. Yeah. In fact, it plateaus out and it can even go down. The best quality to price ratio is all the way over here, much lower, about 20 bucks. That's how much you should spend on a bottle of wine. Now, some people will say that I'm putting my heart and soul into this thing. I'm making an art, a form of art. How much is that worth? How much is art worth? About Nothing. 20 bucks. Ah, but what about the Vintage? Well, look at this. A couple of cromulent slender oh, necks. Not like Renault, and no. they're the same price as well. But this one is from 2019, and this one is from 2022. Well, surely the older one is the better one, right? No. Many people think that the wine aging goes like this, and the flavor just keeps getting better over time. Wrong, wrong, wrong! That's disgusting. The wine at the store has already been aged at the winery. I don't need to be more aged by sitting on this shelf and just collecting dust. Or spending years at the back of your pantry at home. If I'm for sale, I'm ready to be consumed. I'm ready to have your hot lips wrapped around. In fact, the general rule goes a corked bottle should be drunk within five years and a capped bottle within one year. Come, come, there's more. Let's pretend I am a waiter at a restaurant. You happen to be wearing a shirt, and so I have mistaken you as a paying customer. As a waiter, the first thing I will press you about will be food pairings. That's right. White wine with fish? A Merlot with What's pork? <laughs> well, kid. I'm gonna have to pair this truth nugget with something you don't want to hear. The food pairing doesn't really I'll matter. Take it, yeah. It's all completely subjective. It's cuisine by horoscope. It's food astrology. Pay no attention to the sommeliers in the comment section. They are bullshitting to upsell. Yep. Yeah, uh, true, but but. Jack, I find the red wine to be really overwhelming in taste compared to the white or the rosé, though. I feel like a red wine, if you have it something that's really light, when you finish your sip and you go into the e eating, e the taste can still be there, overwhelming, and you can't really taste whatever you're eating. Uh, get the more expensive one, it goes better with the spaghetti. Or, they are a Pisces and you shouldn't trust their opinion anyway. Something else to expect at a restaurant? Expect to get ripped off by the markup. Most restaurants add a 250 to 300% markup on their wine. And the cheaper the bottle, the higher the proportional markup tends to be. So a $20 bottle oh, will wait. turn into an eight. Hold up, wait till you hear about the clubs with their fucking balsers at 20,000%. Wait a minute. $80 oh. bottle. But now a $100 we're bottle may only rise to 150. Most people get the second cheapest bottle on the menu, regardless of the kidding. pairing, and that'll do just fine. And that's it. No more tips. Unless you want to leave me one. Huh? Actually, you know what? I've got a fucking tip for you, mate. Ad time. I bet you're wondering how I got this cog in my knee. <laughs> that's because I became the face of Incogni, the service that helps you be forgotten on the internet. I used to be a humble florist. One day we received a shipment of wait, forget wait. me nots. <laughs> Jay, he changed it. But the inexplicably, in legal notices to tell him to f off. Take Steve off your database. European law this, American law that. Yes. In Kanye Park, you know your chant. Have our meetings. Oh, that's a good deal. And yeah. over. I think mean, this is actually a really good topic for video. I, I like Welcome it. to the wine underground. We have our meetings here because it stays at a very pleasant temperature. You know, us wine masons, we control everything. We are few, but many. That doesn't make sense. Look at the back of this bottle. See the No Fat Chicks logo? 
We put that there. It is the symbol of our organization. We have a dirty finger in every glass of government and corporation stuff. If you cross us, whoops, perhaps you'll have a little accident. Last year, Little Upstart tried to make wine actually taste good. You know, like how grape soda does. Cut him up so oh, good I he had to get soda. stitches. Yuck. We caught one reporter trying to dig around into our operation. We all know how that one ended. With an airstrike. All right, my little juice box. I'm going to let you in on a secret. Why is champagne called champagne? Because it's in the original well, champagne. I'll tell you. It all began in 1668. In the Abbey of St. Peter in northeast France, there's something spooky going on. It's springtime. And in the cellar where they keep all the wine, bottles would suddenly, unexpectedly, explode. Now this was especially common during morning mass. Ho oh, ho, that's a bad omen. Sometimes the explosions would cause little chain reactions and bottle after bottle would break down the line, ruining the majority of the crop. The peasants were frightened and also parched. Sacre Blue, lay wine. What is happening? The monks would refer to this as the devil's wine. Lay wine is cursed. Le God, he must be anger at us. We need a hero. In walks Dom Perignon. He is just the man for Way. the job. A Benedictine monk at the Abbey. He's got a new role, the cellar master. And it's his mission to find out the what the hell is going game. on here. So Dom starts looking at all the bottles. And what he figures out pretty quickly is that the wine itself is releasing gas. That thing is too bitter. The gas builds up pressure and... Why that is happening, he doesn't know. But it's his job to stop it. So he gets to work, trying all sorts of things to stop his mortal enemy. The bubbles. In the first year, he tried insisting that only the youngest grapes be picked. Perhaps this will stop your bubbles. And it didn't. The next year, he changed up how the grapes were pressed. Push harder, we'll squeeze out the bubbles. Son of a bitch. He tried picking the grapes very early in the morning and no other time. Nope. And on and on. The bubbles would win the battle every year. For eight long years, he tried all sorts of different things. <laughs> and no strategy worked. No, no, the bubbles. Eventually, he was at the point of almost giving up. Until one day, hey, what if the wine is still fermenting? So he takes a couple of the bottles and he opens them and... Huh, it is. We ferment the wine. Once it's done, it goes into the bottle. How does it then start fermenting again? How is that possible? And here, the mystery was solved. So it turns out, in North France, they have very fast changing seasons. And owing to that, the yeast doesn't actually get time to do its job. Instead, it would get cold very quickly in the winter, and all the yeast would go dormant. Then the winemakers would go, oh brilliant, fermentation slowed down, it must be done. They would then bottle it, and they would store it. But oh, once so, summer so came like back around, the process would wine. spring back to life, and carbon dioxide would build up and... Okay, he thinks, I cannot change the climate. Perhaps I shall not win the war against the bubbles. Now, the bubbles are his enemy, and he has another enemy. The English. Therefore, the enemy of his enemy or something. Anyway, he starts talking chat. to the English, and he goes, Chat, also chat, yeah, when you're on a budget, chat, don't buy champagne. Buy sparkling wine, okay? Sparkling wine is champagne, except it's... A portion of the price is it's not made in the region, and nobody gives a fuck about the region. It's the same thing. It's just a region. There's nothing else. Hey, how do you guys stop your bottles from exploding? And the British go, You what, my core? Well, peep at how thin the bloody glass be in it. Thin glass is the problem. Thank you for using this test as speech preview. For a paid version, please go to... See, the English have created new coal-fired bottles with much thicker glass. Then they put a cork in the top and it allows them to make very foamy beer. 
That's right. He could just use thicker bottles and he won't have to worry about stopping the bubbles at all. <sighs> so Dom goes running back to France. He's panting. He's Tapping sweating. And there's okay. bits of brie on his shirt. He's going, better bottles, better bottles. Everyone's confused and terrified. I get the difference. But they give it a shot. And there it was. Over the the court, people though. of France loved it. I, I love this new style. Even the French royals were. Yeah, but the people, the people in France, what, what do they not like? Bro, they eat fucking snails and fucking grass and shit. Okay. What the fuck do they don't like? Enjoying Could have been anything that would like them. He even started adding extra yeast and sugar to really get the bubbles going. And so Dom Perignon had created what we call today champagne. What a god. Now, there's a 19th century marketing campaign that says the moment he uncorked his champagne for the first time, he tried it and said, Come quickly, come quickly, I am tasting the stars. Oh. But that's actually a myth. He never really said that. But there's still a problem. And this one, Dom cannot fix. The pulp. If you bottle wine while it's still fermenting, so that you can keep the bubbles in, you're also trapping in a bunch of dead yeast and debris and gross particles too. Also, it's all cloudy. No, no, we want it clear. We want it crystal looking. How will we ever solve this problem? Shut it. Dom dies. <laughs> so bad, so bad. 1805, in walks Madame Clicquot. She's just the man for the job. I am also French. I have come to remove all Z little beats. I will clench Wait. my teeth together and go pitu pitu back into the bottle. Chat, now, Madame chat, Clicquot. Chat, that's the other one. La Veuve Clicquot, motherfucker. Wait. Was a very this is, shrewd this is the two lady. Her husband died dinner. when she was in her early 20s. My husband is dead. Lol. And part of the estate she was bequeathed included a winery. She immediately got to work, making it into a successful business. I shall invent a process called lay riddling. Here's what you do, right? You put these bottles on a rack at a 35 degree angle with the top facing down. Every two days, she would give the bottle a little shake and slightly increase the angle. After eight to 10 weeks, all of the sediment would come to rest in the neck of the bottle. All right, quick tangent. Did you know that when you that increase sense. the salt concentration in water, you can drop its temperature down much lower without it freezing? Tangent over. So she takes this sub-zero salt water and dips the neck of the bottle in there, then lets it sit until the neck freezes. Now you have a sort of frozen cork filled with all of the gross pulp, and then you simply pop off the top. And the whole thing goes shooting out as a fun prank for your friends and family. Oh. Then they add in a little more extra base wine and sugar and leave it to age. And with that, Clico has just created a clear, sparkling wine. And that is Riddling. And Madame Clico is... The Riddler. Wait, that's kind of hardcore. So Dom Perignon and Madame Clico are both credited as the godfather and godmother of Champagne. Today, the Dom and Clique brands yeah, are owned by idea. LVMH, the same parent company that owns Louis Vuitton, Tag Heuer, Tiffany & Co, Hennessy. Actually, pretty much every luxury brand. But why is it... Wait a minute, hold up. Every luxury brand? Oh, fuck. Hmm? Which one else? Givenchy. But why is it called it's like Black Champagne? Well, that's because it comes from the Champagne region, you dummy. And anything else with bubbles is just sparkling wine. Uh huh. Oh, it's you. I was just looking out over the sunset. You know how it is thinking about stuff that happened in the past. I remember it all too well. It was literally 1984. I was walking home with my parents from the opera. Come on, keep up, we're nearly there. Hey, let's take a little shortcut, they said. We can cut through here. We were walking down a well-lit alleyway. It was nothing but quaint restaurants and bistros. Then suddenly, a man holding a bottle of Shiraz came out of nowhere. Well, Just what? a tipple, he said. I was terrified. I knew nothing about wine. Go on, he said. 
My hands were shaking, knees weak, arms heavy. Complex aroma, wouldn't you say? Very good tannins. Oh, really? Yep. What's a tannin? <gasps> I don't Is know. Is that the barrel or some shit? My parents died from embarrassment right there on the a... spot. Mommy! I'm sorry, Daddy. Fuck it. Just a tipple, tipple, tipple. It's too late for me, but I don't want the same thing to happen to you. That's why we have to learn about how to serve wine. Oh no. So you've bought a bottle of wine to show your friends and family they, they, they how show successful it. You nod and your head. sophisticated you are. They, Did you know that Da Vinci painted the Mona Lisa? So let's go through how to serve the big three. White, red, and champagne. Let's say you've bought champagne. Oh! <laughs> that bottle goes in the fridge. Champagne is served cold always. To open, peel off the foil and do not aim it at your face. Then twist off the metal thing. If you want people to think you're fancy, use the proper word, musolette. Musolet. It helps to contain the pressure. Again, don't aim this thing at your face. And it's really worth repeating. The PSI inside a champagne bottle is 70 to 90. That puts it in the same league as a nail gun. So the cork comes out at about 50 miles an hour. And if you're in a house, you want to hold onto it very firmly with your hand. No. If you're Bezos, or you just won the Grand nah, Prix. Nah, Chad, Chad, Chad did some pussy shit. You can still do it nice though. You can still, Chad, you uncoat the top like half a centimeter, then you put it with your thumb and you just go bonk. It's still nice though. Hold onto it very firmly with your hand. If you're Bezos, or you just won the Grand Prix, fling it over some ladies. I always bonk it, fuck that shit. But if you want to be really fancy, you can use a sword. Favorite. This has been a tradition for a couple hundred years, popularized by Napoleon. After each victory, the army would use their sabers to crack one open for the boys. But the sword's just ceremonial. You can use pretty much any blunt object to knock off the top. A phone, a shoe, this fish head. If it's cold, it shouldn't fizz over too much, but you might want to have someone on the side with a ready glass. The glass type should either be a tulip Chat. Chat. or a flute. I'm such a bitch, Chat, is I'd never do this because I'm too scared of shards, okay? I don't give a fuck, Chat, it is not worth the hassle, okay? If, you, if people savor it, I don't drink it, dude. I, because I'm scared of shards, man. Hello, if you've seen The Great Gatsby, you may notice that they use these. Up until the mid-1900s, people used coupes. That's because, back in the day, excessive effervescence wasn't very cool. So these cups helped actually dispel the bubbles faster. In fact, sometimes they'd even use a small whisk or a fork to dissipate all the bubbles. Now there's actually an old Why? myth that the shape and size of the coupe was molded from one of Marie Antoinette's boobos. But it's probably not true. Small bubos, Eventually, then, then. bubbles became a fancy feature, so the flute was adopted. They can be made from glass, but preferably they're made from crystal, so that they shimmer as much as possible. And the best flutes would also feature a small rough spot right there at the center of the glass at the bottom to create a sort of tornado of bubbles. Anyway, as you pour, tilt sideways so it isn't all head, and don't pour more than two thirds full. Done. White wine. White wine is best served chilled too. 10 to 15 degrees though, not fridge cold. Use a small glass oh, bowl yeah, and pour to about disgusting. half full. And when you drink, do a little sniff test and you know, aerate it a bit. Then hold it down low on the stem so your hands don't heat up the liquid. If it's not to your taste, cut it with 50% Sprite and add a few ice cubes. Sang oh, Red. Sangria. Red wine is not chilled. It is served at room temperature. When you first open it, you're supposed to let it sit for a while to oxidize. That gives it more flavor. Although if you don't want to wait, you can just pour it into a decanter. That does the same thing. To drink from, we want a big bowl on a stick. So you get a full face of the aromas of the great blood. <laughs> when you pour the thing, fill it about one third full. That's pretty much it. 
However, when it comes to wine snobbery, uh, red wine snobbery is at the top of the Maslow hierarchy. Crushed white rock. It's like almost like a rock quarry. Jack, oh my God, shut Jack, up. Jack, guys, I think these things you have to know them, okay? Because if you're the one to, who to clutches up and orders at the table, right? The guy shows up and you have to do all that. If they have to do all that. If they, if they look at it, nod your head, he pours it, and it's fucking, it's fucking sniff, whirl, sniff, fucking sip, gargle, and he's going, yes, absolutely, yep. And then, bro, and you have to do, all, have to do all that, you have to know it. That people do, and they all go a bit mental, and it's kind of gross, and it looks dumb. You have to do that, yeah, you have to do if you think you're ready, ready for the ultimate test, ready to take the one chip challenge of enology, then here's how you do it. When the waiter comes over, insist on taking a teensy sample. Inspect for color, clarity, and legs. Legs refers to how viscous the wine is. Smell it. Mm. Smells like a red wine. Swirl it around on the table, <laughs> making a loud scratching noise so that everyone knows you're a connoisseur. Swirling the wine glass is almost like turning up the volume on the stereo. When you taste it, you're supposed to get it over every part of your mouth so that when you brush your teeth later, it's awful. Then take in big sips of air. This is where you comment on the texture and taste. Complex notes! You yell across the room. Now this is the best part. You can just make shit up about vanilla <laughs> smatterings or citrusy undercurrents. I swear, there's a hint of vanilla blueberry. Vanilla oatmeal. It's one of those things that's kind of true, but subjective enough that no one can really refute you. So make a big show of it. There is a little bit of an earthiness, almost a <laughs> this guy. clay note to this. It's a little bit meaty. It's a little bit sort of um, uh, uh, rustic. There are definitely hints here of Monster Ultra Sugar Free. If this is a taste test and you're sampling dozens of wines, you want to spit out the sample into this gross bucket so you don't get too drunk. Do not ask the waiter if you can drink from the bucket. It's the waiter's privilege and he's very protective of it. And that is how to serve wine. Okay, that's a lot of shitting on wine, people. And we shouldn't get bullied. But let me do a quick one Nah, they should get bullied, though. Because overall, wine is good. And a little wine snobbery can be good also. Being into wine is one of the great dad hobbies. One day you will have a model train set in your basement complete with a little walking path and the grass just right. The best part about this hobby is building the thing, getting it just perfect, and then making people sit there while you explain the little trains in excruciating detail of how they work. Now the fun of Warhammer, that's when you save up for the little space marine man, you take him out of the packet, you put on a podcast with some Warhammer in the background. Um, of all the Primarchs, Horus is the best kisser. And you slowly paint it yourself. And then you argue with your mates later about why the Necrophiles are the best race. There are people that spend like tens of thousands of dollars on coffee machines and equipment. And then it takes like an hour to make a coffee. And it's like only 5% better, maybe, than the ones you get at the cafe. You know what? I have to you know, I could that, be actually. Mr. Killjoy and come in and go, what's the point of that? Why not just buy it from the cafe? Why not just get a pre-painted space marine? Why not Jack, have someone Jack, else? You go to the, you go to your local nice Italian spot, okay? They make yourself a, a coffee way better than what the fuck you get it at home. Okay? I don't give a fuck. Eh? The Italians can make you a coffee in a half day. I'll tell you that much. Just install the train set. But then there's no ceremony. There's no fun. There's no hobby. Wine is very similar. The getting a little bit too obsessive about the thing, and being like some lemon, Italian, lemon zest as well, lemon pith. Mmm, super tangy. Is the purpose of wine. It's the fun of wine. Which is why wine is better than just some old grape juice. And you fucking wine loser snobs, you know what? You're all right. Wrong, 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 wrong. Red wine, bitter as fuck, disgusting for most of it. 90% of it. Okay, overpriced garbage. Box wine clears, plus rosé clears, plus white wine clears, plus you're ugly. And poor. And that's about it. There's just one last thing left. The practical. Come on, my little I, 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 I booked out a whole restaurant. They serve some of the best Guys, blue whale caviar here. Yes. 
I was All right, you did. Snubs. You sat through the whole video without crying. I think this calls for a toast. Uh, steady now. Whoop. Okay, that's disgusting. Uh oh. I can't believe you killed again. But it's okay. I feel like we're becoming close friends who can keep secrets and stuff. And because we're such close friends, I'm going to keep teaching you things. That's right. You're going to be just like me. I just cannot tell which of this is blood and what's wine. By the way, this is the second video. If you haven't seen the first one, which is on Fancy at the Theatre, go look at it over here. But there's also Fancy, the arts, on Incognito. That's already live. And there's the next Incognito on its way. Do not forget... Guys, yeah, better watch it. Story mode. Do not forget Incogni. And do not forget... To dream. Hello?